So I'm at the stage of the job where we've got our scarf jointed valleys in and I was just looking back um, at, at these valleys and I can see four scarf joints all in the same position. I've got one in the ridge behind me up here. I've got one immediately above me there. That was Ed's first one. And I've got this pair here in these valleys and I just think they're absolutely superb. I'm actually gonna be bringing some support up here from this wall here, which reduces the span of the valleys back down to what they need to be to work over this length. Then we're gonna be doing the valley jacks. The valley jacks are simply rafters that cut onto the valleys and they do look complicated because they've got a compound cut and they all reduce and trying to get them parallel and true can sometimes cause you a few issues but actually it's very simple once you know how and I do all of my valley jacks by means of a diminish all that means is is they reduce exactly by the same amount every time I can work that diminish out very easily and then I'll mark the longest rafter and I'll set the diminishes on the rafter and take everything from that so I can go and cut I've got seven here I've got seven there and I've got 14 on the other side so I've got 28 rafters in total which take me all the way around the from ridge to valley to valley to ridge and so on so I'm going to get down get on the bench lay out my timbers mark them up cut my top cuts measure my lengths and get them all cut. Now, if you've done this before, if you're a carpenter and you've done this before, or if you're a carpenter and you're gonna be doing this, then it can be a job which is very frustrating. It doesn't need to be frustrating and just like all of the other aspects of roof construction, it can be done by the measure on the ground using just basic mathematics. Yes, some of the mathematics can seem a little bit mind blowing and that's why the app that I'm developing will allow people to say I'm using this center, I'm using this pitch, and it will give you what we call the diminish. So the diminish simply means that if I try to draw a triangle like this, so that could be a rafter, that could be a ridge here, and that could be a valley here. So for every, every step that you come across equally, whether it's 400, 600, and in our case, 450. The rafter, which travels to the valley, will reduce by exactly the same amount of size. And the basic way that this works out, for every degree of pitch, for every angle, let's take this as a protractor, so for every angle of a protractor, for every single unit you travel it will travel a certain distance okay so for for 45 degrees for example for every single unit you travel let's say a meter for every one meter the distance is 1.4142 okay so a rafter if that is a wall plate and that's a wall plate you want a rafter to go from there to there at 45 degrees that measurement there is going to be one meter, four hundred fourteen point two, or one yeah, so one meter, four hundred and four, <laughs> one point four one four two is going to be that measurement. So, if then you imagine, if you take these lines across, this these rafters are going to get shorter by the same amount every time. That is what we call the diminish. And to work the diminish out is really straightforward. You divide your common rafter per meter of run by 10. So in my case, it's 0.1412, 4, 1.4142. And then I multiply that by the centers. So in my case, it's 450. So I times it by 4.5. That gives me an answer. And in my case, it's 0.6 three, six millimeters. And so for every rafter, it will get shorter by six, three, six, six, three, six, six, three, six. Now that's measured down the rafter. So if this was a template rafter here, bird's beak there, 
I could use the rafter and measure, mark it all the way down, and that will give me the length of each one of my timbers. So that's exactly what I'm doing with the valley here. I know, if I show you down here, it's a bit tricky, let's get the camera in. So I know that if this was the first valley jack rafter, this would be the longest length here. So I know the next one for, for my spacing of 45 or 450 millimeters, we're gonna be there. We're gonna be 636 millimeters shorter. So let's say this has got a cut on it here, a valley jack cut there. That when that's cut, it will come over and it will fit exactly 450 millimeters on center. And that will be the exact length to get me back to the ridge. So the next one would then be again to here, 636, and then obviously you'd cut that, bum, 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 and that would travel over, and it would be two times 450, or 900. Yes, it's a bit of bamboozling, but actually it's really straightforward. So I've compiled a list of all of my material that I need to fill in all four corners of this valley. But what I'm going to do is cut two from one, because I've got long lengths, I can get the longest, and then I can get the reverse from the other end of it, the shortest. So I only do one jack cut at a time to gain two rafters. But what I am going to do, because I can get a good yield out of the long lengths I've got, the first or the smallest rafters at the top, I'm gonna to cut those to the measurement or to the diminish, and I'm gonna fit them. Now if they fit, then everything else is gonna be perfect because they're the smallest, they go at the top. If there's any discrepancy with the centers or the measurements, it's all gonna show there. tiniest jacks look like. So they all meet on the valley. This one's lovely because it's clasping part of the scarf joint as will probably the next pair. And they all line up. So they line up over the top, down the bottom and back up. And that's how these look. So now I know because they fitted an absolute treat. Let's try and get underneath here. Because they fitted an absolute treat, I know that every single rafter now we'll fit, so what I've got to do now is basically cut everything to fit down the length of the valley and the jobs are good.